Hello everyone, this is Ronnie from the UK Fruit Fest. And um, this week I'm sharing some information and some videos relating to a brand new book that is available now called Raw Vegan Myths Debunked 2, which is available as part of the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle. And you can find a link to that below. I highly suggest you go and check it out. It's a bundle of over 40 books and e-courses that are meant to educate and help people with a raw vegan lifestyle. Uh, so check that out. There's 36 contributors to it. Um, a lot of very long-term raw vegans, successful raw vegans and acclaimed authors and so on are part of it. So you can go and check that out in your own time and, and see if it's right for you. Uh, this week, uh, on this video, sorry, I'm going to be mentioning something that's in the book that I made called Raw Vegan Myths Debunked, where I've went through different things that we commonly hear in the raw vegan movement that might not be exactly true or not. And I wanted to try and confirm for myself what was real. And then I wanted to share that with others. So one of the first topics in the book is organic food. And this is probably one of the most controversial ones, one where I'm ruffling some feathers and not really something that I'm looking to ruffle feathers but I've always had some concerns about the message I was hearing about organic food because people would talk about a raw vegan diet and then they would kind of say, oh, but of course it needs to be organic if you want to be optimally healthy. And, um, you know, they would get very excited and angry sometimes talking about the, the chemicals and the farmers and the pharmaceutical companies or the agricultural companies and this whole conspiracy. And one of the things that made me really question the whole message of organic or how, how impactful and important that message was, was a time where I was with a friend and I offered him some strawberries. Now I knew this guy was commonly ordering takeaway, Indian takeaway from a local Indian takeaway and, and, and other takeaways. He would have bottles of Pepsi and drink that in, in one go in a day sometimes. He would talk a lot about the food and the food supply and the food system and all that stuff and the conspiracies around it. But he wasn't seeming to take a lot of action in actually changing his diet. He was a vegetarian, continued to have cheese and dairy products in his diet. And I offered him strawberries and he went, oh, wait a minute, are those organic? And I thought, this is the problem with this message that people are getting this idea that the organic thing is so important that they should avoid fruits and vegetables. It's not encouraging people to eat fruits and vegetables, it's actually detracting away from the message to eat fruits and vegetables. So I would see, and I've seen this in raw food promoters talking about fruit, fruit's great, fruit's great, good, diet's good, whatever. But then when it comes to the, that thing, the chemicals, excited, passionate, talking about, and, and I, I'm just like, that's what people are going to take from the talk, is the whole thing about that. And then some of them also, and I've dealt, dealt with this in another book, they'll go into the, the soil depletion, there's no nutrition left. And they get so excited about that. And I'm like, why aren't we getting excited about the amazing miracle of fruits and vegetables? So I always was a little bit, thinking this organic thing is it what's the truth around that and I always kind of assumed there was something right about it and I did make an attempt at one point to order more organic but I realized that the, the supplier I had at the time wasn't very consistent wasn't necessarily any better or different sometimes so I kind of um, moved away from that a little bit but I, I saw some videos years ago by a guy called Andrew Perlock and Andrew was a raw vegan at the time. And he was sharing a lot of information that seemed to question the whole concept of organic. And, and I think I'd seen other information as well, but I remember his videos and he did an interview with a scientist and there was a lot of information there questioning this organic thing. And that, there was something about that that seemed right to me. But this time around, I really looked into it a bit more deeper. So I've never been that concerned about organic. I've always had concerns that it actually distract is a distraction away from the, the message. 
and from my information, I've always seen that um, even if you are worried about pesticides, you should you should be far more concerned about animal products than fruits and vegetables. So I was always thinking there was a lack of balance there in the message. So in the book, uh, I went over that in a chapter called Organic Food, Is It Healthier Than Better for the Environment? So from what I see, there's an assumption around many people that organic food is more nutritious and more healthy for us. There's an assumption that organic food is better for the environment and less polluting. There's an assumption that organic food is not sprayed with chemicals. There's an assumption that organic farming is less harmful to animals and insect life. And also that organic farming is less harmful to the soil. Many of those things you will think are a given, surely. Because at the end of the day, one, if, if you're putting these toxic synthetic chemicals in, on, on the food, then that must be worse. Um, but I wanted to look into these ideas a bit more deeply. And I've written about this in the book. But um, specifically, I wanted to look at the following things. Did organic mean no pesticides? Did organic mean no synthetic chemicals? Did organic mean organic farming mean less harmful to the environment? Were organic foods healthier and more nutritious for us? Are conventional foods full of toxic pesticides? And should we follow the dirty dozen list? And that's another thing people see this dirty dozen list like gospel. Like we must follow this list. Oh, the strawberries this year. We must avoid strawberries. Like I personally never take any interest <clears throat> in the dirty dozen list. And I looked at it more in this book. <clears throat> so what does the word organic mean? In the Oxford Dictionary, it says relating to or derived from living matter, which is the kind of long-term real meaning of it. But of food or farming methods produced or involved in production without the use of fertilizers, pesticides, or other art artificial chemicals. Cambridge Dictionary, not using artificial chemicals in the growing of plants and animals for food and food products. Merriam-Webster, of relating to yielding or involving the use of food produced with, without the use of a fertilizer of plant or animal origin, without employment of chemically formulated fertilizers, growth stimulants, antibiotics, or pesticides. And none of those definitions are true. None of those definitions are true, but that's what people think it means. Actually, what organic means is food that is being grown in line with organic standards. That's it. That's all it means. So we have to actually look into what are the organic standards. And the organic standards are set by various bodies. But in the UK, they're set by the Soil Association, which is the oldest group of organic standards. And they were in line with the EU standards until um, Brexit happened. But they actually go farther than the EU standards. The US has slightly different standards, but they're very similar. In fact, they're, they're pretty much similar. Um, the Soil Association produces information from the organic market. Organic food is only about 1% of food produced. It's a very small amount. And um, it, it may be a little higher than that. But it's worth $2.7 billion. So there's quite a lot of money in it, um, just not compared to the other food that gets created. But there's enough money in it for them to certainly get their information out there a bit more. So organic farming is based on certain principles. But all these principles, they're just principles. Like I, I can't, I don't see why that relates only to organic farmers. Like, oh, do we want to create a system that is helpful to the soil? Like, why wouldn't other farmers who aren't classified as organic want that as well? So there's certain standards that they in, encourage organic suppliers, uh, farmers to go towards crop rotation, cultivation of nitrogen fixing plants, prohibition of mineral nitrogen fertilizers. Um, Reduce the impact of weeds with uh, resistant varieties, using different varieties that are resistant to these things. Um, there's a number of things like that uh, that they encourage people to do. I'm not sure if maybe every farmer or many farmers want, want to do that. Um, also, some of the standards of organic in the, in the EU include things like not using any GMOs, although why that is exactly uh, a thing it's, it's a little bit questionable because if you want to get rid of pesticides and fertilizers, the GMOs is actually a solution to that. So it's hard to know if they're being consistent there. And, you know, to limit the use of chemically synthesized products. But I think that every farmer would want to let it limit their use because they end up spending money on it. 
The first thing that I found was that organic doesn't mean no pesticides. Now, that in itself is surprising to a lot of people. Organic doesn't mean no pesticides are used. Um, and the term pesticide from the Food and Agricultural Organization of the UN, they say pesticides are any substance or mixture of substances of chemical or biological ingredients intended for repelling, destroying, controlling any pest or for regulating plant growth. The term pesticide applies to insecticides, herbicides, fungicides, rodenticides, molluscicides, wood preservatives, various other substances used to control pests. Pesticides are also included in plant growth regulatory components and desiccants. It's not just about killing pests. It's about it's, it's a number of different things that pesticides do to stop pests from interfering with, with these crops. So pesticides are allowed in organic farming, and pesticides have probably been used in various ways for many years, but prior to any any synthesized pesticides. I've written out a complete list of all the organic pesticides that are allowed, but they're things like allium, which is gar garlic extract. There's um, neem tree oil, which is called azadiractin, beeswax, something called cos OGA, don't know what that is, eugenol, geraniol, hydrolyzed, hydrolyzed proteins, laminarin, maltodextrin, pheromones, plant oils, pyrethrins, and a whole bunch of things, even things like vinegar, even fructose can be used as, um, as a pesticide in some way. Um, something called spinosad, um, so there's all these pesticides, there's all these organic pesticides, and, and you're thinking, well, these come from, these come from a natural supply, it's just like a crushed up garlic oil or whatever, and it probably just all, you know, disintegrates in the soil, nice and natural, and it's not like synthetics which stay around forever, that's the kind of thought process a lot of people have. And they're all natural, in a sense because there's no synthetics in organic farming, surely. Well, that's what the dictionary definition says. And actually that's not true. The Soil Association allows for synthetic pesticides to be used, a limited amount, but it allows for seven synthetic pesticides to be used. Most people do not know that. So when they say synthetic pesticides, well, that's in organic farming as well. So. What's the difference here? Copper ammonium carbonate, copper sulfate, copper oxychloride, sulfur, pyrethrum, soft soap, and rotenone, known as deris. These are all these are all synthetic pesticides that are allowed to be used in organic farming. And um, similar list in the US, maybe a little bit different. And the assumption would be that these pesticides are less harmful for the environment. Well, is that true? Well, in my book, I go into a little bit more detail, but there's evidence in the studies where they've put the organic pesticides against the synthetic, and the synthetic pesticides came out better, less harmful, more effective, less could be used, less damaging to the environment, less damaging to human health than the organic pesticide. And that's not to say that we should worry about either of these things, because actually the message that I'm going to get to is that we really shouldn't worry about it at all. But if we're actually going to make that argument or people make that argument, there's evidence that goes the, the other way on that. And there's not a great deal of evidence to confirm that these organic pesticides are safer or healthier. There's, there's not. Um, a number of them, like rotenone, was actually banned in the US for a while. And rotenone in studies on rats have shown Parkinson's like symptoms. Uh, whereas the another of the synthetic pesticides that can be used in place of rotenone doesn't show these issues when tested with rats. So the idea that these synthetics are damaging, they stay in the system, actually, they seem to get removed from the system easier sometimes. What about organic is less harmful from the environment? Well, once again, we see the same thing. We can find research and evidence to show when compared that the synthetic pesticides were less damaging. And I've went into a bit more detail on that in the book. What about land use? Sometimes there's an idea that, you know, these monocrops are really unproductive. Well, actually, it seems to be the case from what I've seen, organic farming is less productive. Well, maybe you think, who cares? 
The problem is that means that more land has to be used to produce organic crops. If we have to use more land than we already use, then that's a problem. Now, of course, animal agriculture is the real drain of land resources. But in general, what we would say is even in a vegan world, we'd want to, we'd want to use less land. We don't want to use as much land as possible to produce food. We want to use as little land as possible so that there's more land that goes back to a, a natural ecological system that can help with the, the general balance of the ecology, ecology of the earth. I mean, I guess that's the, the idea. And at the end of the day, whenever we're farming, insects and things are getting harmed. There is some harm that's happening. So we, we kind of want to, as vegans especially, we want to reduce that. And uh, organic food might mean we have to use more. Now, here's the other one. Organic food is more nutritious and healthier. So you might have heard that. Certainly, you might have heard it's got more, more nutrition. And it seems like some raw food educators are promoting the idea that there are studies that show that organic food has more nutrition. Now, it is true that there are studies that show that organic food has more nutrition. Individual studies. But that's not really how we find strong evidence. What, what tends to happen in the world of science is that the studies, the individual studies get collated together, get analyzed, and get, uh, have, have an interpretation done um, or get reviewed as, as an entire you know, collection. And the data gets analyzed to see what's the overall picture from hundreds of studies. We, talk, we call that a systematic review or a meta-analysis and so on. So what have the bigger meta-analyses and these systematic reviews said? Well, essentially what they found is over and over has been the case. And there's been articles around organic food and organic food supply apparently going back at least 100 years. Some of these Meta-analysis studies have looked at over 150 articles, some it's 240 have been looked at. And then when they do that, they don't look at, they don't use all of the data from all those studies. They look through them to find the ones that are the best, that are the most reliable, that they're least likely to have bias, um, that are the that have been put together in the best way, and they use the most reliable ones. So they don't use all of them, but they review them all to get the ones that are, that are the best ones. And over and over, these meta-analyses have made conclusions saying, with regard to all other desirable nutritional values, no major differences were observed between organic and, and conventional. Um, another one said, from a systematic review of the currently available published literature, evidence is lacking for nutrition-related health effects, the result from the consumption of organically produced foodstuffs. Another said the published literature lacks strong evidence that organic foods are significantly more nutritious than conventional foods. Consumption of organic foods may reduce exposure to pesticides and anti -resist, antibiotic resistant bacteria. Another said, in conclusion, the link between organic food consumption and health remains insufficient, documented in epidemiological studies. Thus, well designed studies uh, are required for more power. Um, the Food Standards Agency of the UK seems to be saying organic food is no healthier, provides no significant nutritional benefit. The NHS of the UK said there's no scientific evidence that organic food is healthier. And some people have went a bit further into it and believe it's outright lies, essentially. Now, that's all fine and well, but there's still pesticide residues. So if you're concerned about pesticide, even if it's not the health thing you're concerned about or the nutrition thing, what about the pesticides? You don't want the pesticides. Well, it's absolutely true that organic foods have less synthetic pesticides left over. That's true. If that's all you're interested in, you're right in that. But they don't use synthetic pesticides on organic foods. So of course, there generally wouldn't be any left over. Sometimes there are some left over in, in some cases, but because farmers might lie or whatever, or just make a mistake. But um, Generally, they don't use synthetic pesticides, but as we've shown, they are able to use organic pesticides. But here's the thing, testing is regularly done. In the UK, there's a thing called the Experts Committee on Pesticide Residue in Foods. The Experts Committee on Pesticide Residue in Foods produces a quarterly report 
that is free that you can go and access on the government's website that, sh that there's a complete breakdown of all the foods they've looked at from across the board, supermarkets and so on in the UK and the pesticides that they've tested for and what's remaining in them and the levels and so on. So they're continually doing that. Now you, would, I'm imagining, so but my first point, they don't test for organic pesticides. In the US, they don't test for organic pesticides. So the dirty dozen list, we'll get back to that, doesn't include any information on organic pesticides. So you're right, there's less synthetic pesticides, but that doesn't mean there's not pesticide residue on the organic food. And it could be way more, but we're not testing for it, so we don't know. It could be way worse for you, but we're not testing for it, so we don't know. So, um, but my overall message will be, don't worry about either way. But Conventional food, full of pesticides, right? Tons of pesticides, just covered in pesticides. What's the truth? In the UK, 50% of fruits and vegetables tested, conventional, have no detectable pesticide residue. Let me say that again. 50%, 50% of fruits and vegetables tested have no pesticide residue remaining. Conventional. So people that say, I eat, conventional food, I can taste the pesticides. How can you taste them when they're not there? A lot of the time. In the US, by the way, it's, not, it's 30%, so not quite as good in the US, but in the UK, it's 50%. Um, now, the experts committee said, uh, for fruits and vegetables, 50% had no pesticide residue detected. That's the most recent um, report. And it goes up to 53% for that growing in the UK. 46.69% had detectable amounts of pesticide, but they were below the maximum residue dose uh, li limit. And there were 2.5% that had the detectable amount above the maximum residue limit. And 1.27% for that, no, 1.27% for foods grown in the UK. But the thing about the maximum residue limit, you may go, well, 2.5%. Kind of worried about that. The maximum residue limit is not a health limit. It is a limit placed on the correct use of these chemicals by farmers. So if they're using the chemicals correctly, the amount left over in the food should be less than this particular limit maximum residue dose. So this is a sign that the farmers are using the chemicals incorrectly. The maximum residue limit is not the health limit, and it is set way below the health limit. So actually, most of the time when it says below the MRL, what it means is way below the MRL often, sometimes 10 times below, sometimes hundreds of times below. And that's far below any level at which there could be any start of concern of the health impacts. So there's nothing to be concerned about. There's truly nothing to be concerned about with conventional produce. It's continually being tested to make sure that it is within safety limits. But only the synthetic pesticides are tested. The organic are not. So we don't know what's going on in the organic side. And you could make an argument that could be more. It could be worse in the organic side, ironically. But in general, we shouldn't worry about these things because they're so far below um, any, any, uh, any limits. In the US, the summary shows 99% of the samples tested had pesticide residues that were well below the benchmark, and 0.49% had the result above the set tolerance limit. And um, I, I don't have all the information on the US thing, but um, plant pathologist Dr. Stephen Savage, I would say that he is, Stephen Savage works in the, um, crop, the crop protection industry, so you might, so you might you may take his information with a pinch of salt to some degree. But he said the USDA, they have a PDP, the residue test program, is not set up to be able to detect most of the organic food pesticides. Um, to do that would require a specific assays, and the USDA has chosen not to do that. And um, I go on to the dirty dozen list. So this is an infamous list from around the world that gets published in circulated around the world. A lot of people follow it. Maybe you followed it in the past, got worried about it. 
supposedly it's the clean foods versus the less clean foods. This is once again using the government created information that, that gets tested regularly, they take that information, they look at it and they look at what's the dirtiest and the cleanest foods. It's called the Shopper's Guide to Pesticides and Produce. Now, the interesting thing is, who is it that produces this? No one asks. It's called the Environmental Working Group. They're a lobbying group. They are privately funded by uh, organic industry and by big foundations. If you want a conspiracy, go and look at the Environmental Working Group. Sometimes the conspiracy is on the other side of the debate. Sometimes it's you that's following the conspiracy and you don't even realize it. Um, so go and check out the Environmental Working Group if you like, go and have a look at their donors, if you like, and who's funding them. If you want to go and have a look at who's funding them, uh, you can see that. Uh, a lot of private groups, rich families, and so on. And they act on behalf of the whole organic uh, industry and the lobby around that. And all the people that have lots of money that want to say, look, I'm a good person. I give money to help the environment. You know, all these, all these people. Uh, give them some money now and again. And even if the Dirty Dozen list was right, Dr. Stephen Savage says, well, none of the crop residues are actually problematic, way below any health levels. The Environmental Working Group methods actually rank produce incorrectly. Cauliflower, which he calls part of the Clean 15, ranks at number 434 on the list, has more detections of one tenth of the tolerance than other crops. Apples, which are the worst according to EWG, have 92% of detections well below a tenth of the tolerance, better than many other crops. So they're not even using the data correctly. According to Stephen Savage, they're not even looking at it correctly to actually assess what, what does have the least pesticides on it. So we can't even we can't we can't even trust it. And we should throw it out, ignore it, never think about it. The reality is conventional food has way less pesticides than people think and often has none. And the amounts that are left over are so small that they're not something to be concerned about. Um, and your risk generally when it comes to organic, and this is something that is agreed upon even by all the organic movement, your risk to your health of not eating enough fruits and vegetables is way higher. The risk to your health if you don't eat enough fruits and your vegetables is far higher than um, than than your risk of your, the tiny minuscule risk of something that could happen to you from consuming uh, some some tiny level of pesticide. So overall, my message is: don't worry about. It's good that people are concerned about the food supply. It's good that people want healthier food. It's good that people want better produced food. But organic isn't necessarily the answer. And um, maybe we need to look for further into this. But I, my, for personally, for where we are right now, the first step, get the world toward a vegan diet, get the world on fruits and vegetables. That's the first thing to think about. And then we can look into the rest of it. That's, that's the way I would look at it. And look at, buy the best produce, buy the best tasting stuff. If you want the most nutritious food, it's the stuff that looks and tastes the best in terms of fruits and vegetables. So go towards the stuff that looks and tastes the best. That's my message. If you want to read more about that, you can get that as part of the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle or in my book, um, uh, Raw Vegan Myths Debunked too. I'll put a link below. You can get it this week. Go and check it out. It's a fantastic deal. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.